Hey, what is going on everybody? It is your truly Ali Madawi and I'm super excited and happy to have the opportunity to deliver a pretty, pretty unique message today. Yes, I know we always talk about business, but today I got a good one for you. It's more of a personal one that has kind of to do with the success that we were able to attain. So here is the topic or the question of the day. Is your relationship falling apart, but does your spouse fight you over the idea of you following your passion, whether it's your business or your brand or book that you want to write, sell, or anything that you believe in so, so much? Do you feel like quitting is the only option you have in order to make a peaceful relationship work? Well, uh, you know, that's something that's pretty like touchy-feely to talk about, but I'm here to tell you, if you are going through something like that, I can relate. I uh, made so many mistakes in my nine years career in business, and one of those mistakes, I was almost in the verge of losing the most important person in my life and you know, ruining my marriage because I made a lot of necessarily, not, not that I was this horrible person, but I just was too good to my business and completely ignored uh, what is irrelevant uh, or, or what that reason why, why am I actually doing it? So I wanna share with you a little bit, a couple of different things that I went ahead and I, kind of went in my journey to have the best relationship that I can possibly ask for. Now, it's not good enough because I still have a lot to learn. I have a lot to do. I have a lot to accomplish. I have a lot to create. Uh, but here is what I will tell you. These steps are uh, pretty much in your face. So you're going to feel like I am talking to you directly. And I hope you're paying attention because if you are going through a situation where, you know, your spouse doesn't want you to go in business or, you know, your, your spouse is continually telling you like, hey, why are you going to this seminar again? And why are you spending money we don't have and all that stuff? They're kind of right. And, you know, you, you know the, the there are a few steps that I'm going to share with you right now. And again, I'm not picking on you. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to just share with you what I did myself personally. And if you know anything, I'm in love with the love of my life, my beautiful wife, Claudia Maritza Medawi, right? So I'll tell you some of the things that I did to turn things around right away. So first thing was to take responsibility. Take responsibility. That is the very first hard piece. And again, I'll explain to you what I mean. See, I used to blame my wife for not being supportive while I didn't do good enough of a job of bringing money, production, while I was taking money out of our joint account to spend on seminars and hotel meetings and travels and conventions. And I'm like, don't worry, I'm gonna make this thing work. And then I'll sit my butt down and watch TV instead of work my business. So, you know, I kind of had something to do with the reaction that my wife was having against the fact that she was like always frustrated about me and my business. You know, we did not go out. We didn't go on vacations because I took money to invest on the business. And I'm like, like, you don't understand. This is long term. Have a vision. Be supportive. Stay positive. Yes. And then she will give in. Okay, fine. Just make it work, please. And then 90 days will go by and no change would happen. And then guess what? I had to realize that I needed to take responsibility. So I did. Uh, you know, I'll never forget it. Uh, June of 2014. That was the time when I actually sat down and for the very first time. And at the time, we were married for seven years. Uh, yeah, seven years. And and I, I told my wife, I give you my word that I will be the best version of a husband that you can have, that I will do the right thing and I will stick with you. Regardless of what happened in our past, regardless of how bad things were or how much, you know, I was mean or you were mean or anything that could have been, I took responsibility of my own actions and had faith that she's going to do the same. Now, if this is something that's hitting home with you, by the way, give us some love. Let us know that you agree. I mean, I highly recommend that you also share this video because there are many spouses out there right now that they have their relationships, their marriage suffering uh, uh, just because they do not know how to manage this very same component that I'm sharing with you right now. So you can help many people. So very first thing is take responsibility on your own actions. Tell that spouse of yours, hey, I failed. I'm sorry, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I didn't do the right thing. I told you I was gonna make the business work and I, I went lazy, I watched TV, I didn't make the calls that I was supposed to, right? That's regards to business. But I also had to take responsibility on a personal level. I'm sorry, I made my business before you. 
I'm sorry. I did not pay attention to you. I'm sorry. I didn't come back when I was supposed to come back. I'm sorry. I didn't call back when I said I was going to call back. I had to take responsibility of all the things that I fought her over. You know, all the things that like, hey, why didn't you call me last night? You were in Chicago and you said that you were going to call me after the meeting. And I'm like, you kidding me? You always have to be so in my head. I had to work with people. You don't understand. I had to have to. What am I saying? You're not as important to me as everybody else that I just met in a hotel, in a convention in Chicago, whatever the case may be. So uh, keep that in mind. It adds up into, you know, you're, you're talking from a business entrepreneurial language. She or he is listening from a relationship from, hey, you're supposed to be there for me. See, when things change, they usually create change. So it's extremely important for you to keep that in mind and make sure that you're not uh, just ignoring the process. So take responsibility. The second thing that I had to do was to commit. See, on that June of 2014, when I told my wife, I give you my word that I'll be the best husband, that I'll put you first before my business, that I will make sure that I rearrange my whole priorities, that I will work with you, that I will listen to you, that I will communicate to you. I made a commitment. Now, commitment is very hard. Most people don't commit because they don't want to be held accountable. So make sure that you have a commitment written down for yourself, that you stand by it, that you honor it. Next, you're going to have to adjust your life. See, I had to adjust my life. I had to eliminate the people who used to make fun of me because I was whipped, because my wife controlled me. Because my wife wouldn't let me go and hang out with the boys after a hotel uh, meeting or seminar or whatever the case may be. I had to take responsibility of my own actions. So I adjusted. I, instead of going out every single day for a business meeting and having to spend dinner and whatnot, I said, no, I'm going to start doing webinars. Hey, guys, we'll do webinars. It's the same exact thing. I'll be talking to you from a, a live camera. But I did not spend gas, I did not spend money on food, and I reinvested that money in the household, in the resources where they mattered, right? So I made adjustments in my life. Next thing what we did, or what I did at least, was inclusion in everything I do. See, I used to go to the gym by myself. I used to go to, uh, you know, make uh, uh, business uh, uh, negotiations by myself. I used to make decisions by myself. I, I was the, I don't have to talk to anybody. And then I never, ever, since that June of 2014, I never made decisions without my wife. Business related, personal, um, pleasure, you know, if I want to get tickets to a concert or something like that, I go straight to my wife. Hey, babe, I want to consult with you. This is exactly what I do now. Some people will be like, oh God, you know, so I have to ask permission. No, you're not asking permission. See, that's your partner in life. That's what you agreed on at least. So guess what? You consult with your partner. If I and you own a restaurant 50-50 and you're making a decision without consulting with me, I'm pretty much going to be a little upset. So you have a responsibility to consult with that partner. And I started including her in everything. We started going to the gym together. We started going to meetings together. We started reading books together. We started doing Bible studies together. We started doing all these different things together that I was always very passionate and excited about. And all of a sudden, it meant so much more to the both of us because it became this, this unity thing that we do it all together. And little by little, little by little, the spark started coming back into our relationship and then you have to go back to basics see you got to ask yourself a question what happened that my relationship was so amazing and birds and hearts were flying around me all the time and now we're arguing all the time we're nagging each other all the time we can't stand each other all the time I can't wait until I walk out of the house and storm off or something like that why is that happening well with change comes change so make sure that you go back to basics See, every single week I get flowers to my wife. Once a month, I literally, and you know, I, I don't say this, you know, maybe I'm splitting out all the beans of what I do with my wife to my wife who's sitting on the other side of the house. But guess what? It was so relevant to me that I share this with so many other people that are out there and just let you all know that I flirt with my wife every single day. I send her compliments every single day. I buy her flowers every single week. I, you know, uh, uh, do little cute things. I let her know that she's appreciated and she's beautiful and she's amazing. And it's not a script. It's not just so she can let me do business. I am home 25 days out of 30, literally. So I, I'm a blessed man. I enjoy being with my wife, but that's because I went back to basics. I started doing the things that I used to do when we just met. I started 
focusing on her. I started chasing her again. I started making her my number one. Whenever someone will call me and be like, hey man, can you do a meeting for me at 11 o'clock at nighttime? I'm like, nah man, after 10 o'clock is my wife's time, so you know, it's wifey time. And sometimes, you know, we'll make an exception or a meeting will go a little bit late, but the fact that I'm sharing things that makes her understand she's number one in my book, she's number one in my transaction, she's number one in my passion. You know, whenever I wanna go record music, babe, I, you know, I got this beat, I want you to tell me what you think about it. Hey, can I tell you this song before I go and record it? Or when I wrote the book, she was the first one that I brought her, the very first copy with the errors, and I wrote, I was like, this, is for you, sweetheart. I want you to have the very first copy of it, right? And, and I mean, literally everything we do, every transaction, every webinar, every phone call, the show that we do, all goes by my wife. And here's what ended up happening. This is the interesting thing. We started not only getting along so well that we love each other so much, not necessarily just saying it because we're married, but we actually like, the biggest arguments we have is because we're, we're trying to outdo each other. We're trying to, you know, like, no, you, you decide, I decided what to eat yesterday. Now you have to decide. No, why don't you just decide? Or a movie. No, whatever you want. No, whatever you want. Hey, how about I cook tonight? No, let me cook. No, I'll clean the dishes, which is a fun, fun, fun argument to have all the time because I usually just argue three more times and then I let her win the dishes argument. <laughs> But anyhow, my point is, we went back to basics, and the funny thing is, in nine years, or at the time, seven years in business, seven years that I was hustling and working hard and trying every single thing to make my, my business work for me, and the reason why that I told everybody was my wife, I wasn't able to get her out of her job. The fact that I refocused my whole life and made a commitment to invest on that woman first or make sure that she is the main source of my decisions, the main source of everything that I do. I don't care if you're going to give me a million dollar bonus. I'm going to ask myself, how is this benefiting my wife first? How is this impacting my wife first? That's how I operate. And guess what? On August of last year, we not only got her out of her job, she is the number one supporter and number one fan of Medawi Enterprise. As a matter of fact, the show that we do on Tuesday night, she's the one who produces it. Like literally, she's behind the camera and she's the one who tells me what to do, how to do it, when to do it. She's the one who supports me and tells me, hey, you gotta make those phone calls, what are you doing? Hey, what, who did you talk to today and what are the results? Any meetings, anything coming up, any seminars. She manages all the write-offs, all the budgets, everything that I needed to do for myself she is not only the number one supporter, she ended up taking on all the responsibility that allowed me now to be 10 times more productive in the business space. So again, instead of you fighting your spouse or, or, or you know, saying or making the assumption, oh, I need to have my business work for me in order for this to work out. No, 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 no. Go back to basics. Remember, the reason you started that business or whatever that passion that you have is you did it for that spouse, for the both of you to have the better part or the better side out of life. So make sure you plan a successful life. Make sure you plan a successful life. Most people plan for business. Well, let me rephrase that. Only a few people plan for a business, but most people start a business, especially today more than ever. The U economy is all over. Everybody's starting online businesses, which is phenomenal. But don't forget why you're starting it. Don't forget the reason why you're doing everything you are doing. So here is my my business, my, my, uh, my successful life plan for my wife and I. This is what we agreed on. This is what we shook hands on as partners in life for the rest of our lives. We said God, family, and then business. We started working on our spiritual life. Then we started working on our family values. Who are we? What do we stand for? What do we want? How do we want to have, you know, when do we want to have kids? How we would we want that to look like? You know, uh, where do we want to travel? We went all over the world last year because we got her out of a job. We went to Europe, you know, Belgium, England, France, uh, uh, you know, we, we went to Colombia. We came back and started working together and we literally live life together every single day. Like I said, 25 out of 30 days, I'm home literally all day. And I enjoy it. I mean, I'm a homebody. For some of you, you might think that's weird, but you know, we love it. So we, we worked on our spirituality. We worked on our family values. And then it led to a healthy mindset. And then it led to a positive input into one another, which led to our business to thrive in nine different countries, which led to our network to grow and have a brand that stands on its own feet. That 
you call a successful life. See, most of you change success as money, as, as uh, you know, the, 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 the cars and the flights and, the, and all that. That's all great. But do you have a successful life? Are you living successfully? Stop chasing success. Live a successful life. And here's one more piece that I will tell you. Um, you know, the, the, the last bullet point to that list is I stopped caring what anyone thought about me and my wife, period. I do not give two craps about how you would feel about me and my wife. You know, anyone who made fun of me, you know, like, oh, here goes Ali again talking about his wife. I love you too. You're mad at the guy who's doing his homework? <laughs> you know, uh, the people who are like, oh my God, Ali is so whipped. Ali doesn't do anything without checking with his wife. I don't care. Hey, how is your relationship working out for you? Now, how is your spouse supporting you in your business? How is your spouse working with you in your business? How is that relationship going, right? So I stopped caring what anyone thought because at the end of the day, I wake up next to my dream woman and I go to sleep with my beautiful, amazing best friend who works, helps, studies, does everything with me that we design and create our life together. And I could not be more blessed. Now, I'm not sharing with you this to brag. Yes, I am. I am bragging. When it comes to my wife, I'm definitely bragging. Well, a little bit at least, right? But I, I, I hope this inspires you enough to make adjustments in your life that, remember the basics, it really is not worth it, you know, to, to work hard to ruin the foundation of what made you start in the first place, right? Um, uh, make sure that you care about each other more than you care about the status of the relationship. Many of you care about the fact that your Facebook status says, you know, in a relationship than you do about one another. Love one another. Understand one another. Study one another. See, I studied the concept of a cancer, which is my wife's, you know, horoscope. Yeah, I, I just was curious. You know, I study my wife's likes and, 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 and the language of love that she prefers. You know, there's people who like to be complimented. There's people who like that sense of touch, just, just skin on skin. There's people who like gifts. There's people who like to be taken out. There's, be, there's different languages of love. See, I studied my wife and she did the same with me. We started working on one another. We started talking to each other. We started communicating with one another. So care about each other more than you care about the status of the relationship itself last but not least love yourself first you got to love yourself see most of you say I'm looking for the person who can complete me well that means you're broken no love yourself see if you love yourself so much with your flaws with your errors with your issues with your you know zips and 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 blackheads and you know crooked teeth and I'm describing myself here whatever it is right messed up skin you are going to project so much love and abundance and happiness to everyone else around you. And guess what? 95% of the time is the person that you are in love with, the person that you married and you committed the rest of your life to. So when you love yourself so much with everything within you, you wake up with a smile. See, I wake up, run into the kitchen to make breakfast to my wife and bring it to her. I made breakfast right on time. I woke you up with it, right? And then she would work hard. So when I'm doing my Facebook lives, like, you know, between 12 and 2 so she's making my either snack or lunch before or after she wants to surprise me with a soup hey I got you or when I'm in the middle of something she'll sneak a little you know a coffee on the side just we do those little things because again we care more about the relationship than we do uh, uh, we care more about uh, each other than we do about the relationship because that'll take care of itself and obviously we love who we are we accept ourselves we laugh ourselves uh, you know sometimes a little too much uh, but that's how I personally have turned my relationship literally it was on the brinks of divorce and I, I that would have been the most devastating thing for myself uh, at least and and I would not allow uh, such uh, an angel walking on earth to uh, to run away from me so I will leave you with one last thing you know I always talk to you about the the daily note of um, the secret uh, the daily teaching so today is Thursday and let's talk about it here is your final note here is a simple powerful process that you can do every day to bring yourself into positive harmony with the universe and the law of attraction. Sit down comfortably, notice how you are feeling, and now relax your entire body. When you have relaxed your whole body, then relax it some more. Now relax it even more and relax it more. 
Repeat this deeper, relaxing seven times, each time relaxing as much as you can. When you have finished, notice the difference in how you are feeling compared to how you felt when you began. Now, you are more in harmony in the universe, with the universe, and the law of attraction. That is a little bit of a practical teaching for today. I actually, you know, and I think I spoke about this many, many times before in the past. What my wife and I do, like literally in a little bit, we take a little break. You know, we'll make a little coffee, take a snack, and just literally relax, like just unplug from the day. The reason we do that, it's like recharging your batteries. And, you know, sometimes I even take a nap. It's like waking up twice in a day. You know, you wake up just as energetic as you did in the morning. So I hope this helped you out a little bit to have an understanding how you can bring balance in your life, how you can stop your relationship from falling apart because you're so passionate and your spouse might not understand it. Just get back to basics. And not only that, uh, just want to send a final invite. We are doing uh, this Tuesday one more uh, prospecting webinar. It is complimentary. It costs you zero dollars, but I highly, highly recommend that you jump on. It's an hour and 15 minutes of invaluable information that you cannot get anywhere else else to register for that go to workwithali.com forward slash prospect that is workwithali.com forward slash prospect so i'm hoping that this brought some positivity into your life and god willing make the adjustments necessary so you too have a successful relationship take care everybody